what now does is that we have we're celebrating history every month by being here we have the 19th amendment that has been ratified and even it took it to be ratified in order for us to get the right to vote uh, uh, you know, for every human on this thing we've been given rights in this community yes we partner with our, our support system and our, our husbands our spouses our brothers but it's truly something that we're here to do to to make social change within our community and about how we view women in leadership and about what our intent is and which is to encourage women and foster um, what you can't see you know what you can see is what you can be and we are now of Prince William that means we have the whole map that we cover and so we're getting out more and more we're expanding into Manassas uh, to all the different areas plus getting ready for this rally uh, we want to include everybody in Prince William mm -hmm. uh, men and women and uh, it's a big job and, and we're ready for it we're only uh, a year old and more and more people are getting to know who we are and what we stand for and that's to uh, elevate women uh, in the community uh, get them involved in politics uh, if that's what they want to do and uh, uh, whatever job they want we want to help to uh, stand behind them and back them. Women suffrage was the first um, demonstration ever held in the White House. The women showed up every single day, rain, sunshine, a snow, and they walked with signs begging for the vote to the president. Please come out. Please talk to us. Uh, we, we're human. We have a right to have a choice. We have a right to have a say in our daily lives and in the community and in the government. And they would be arrested and taken to jail. They were brought down 95 in wagons every day and thrown into prison uh, in Lorton. And uh, they stayed as long as they felt like they wanted to keep them. Well, one day a senator's wife happened to decide that she was gonna step forward and speak up uh, for her sisters. And so she marched that day in front of the White House and uh, they arrested her, brought her down 95, which was no, no small feat back in that day, in the 1920s, threw in prison. Conditions were deplorable. If you had a friend there, and you could bring her a pillow or a blanket or some food, she could possibly survive, but it was so hot in the summer and so cold in the winter. So the husband comes home, the senator comes home and finds out that his wife has been scooped up and thrown in prison down in Lorden, and he brought a bunch of people down and he got his wife out and it got out into the public all over the United States uh, it leaked out through uh, Telegraph and through the newspapers and people were appalled that's when things changed because of the senator's wife um, it, it actually leaked out and how they were being treated force-fed they tried to have a, a demonstration where they're not going to eat so uh, it would bring focus to the prison. And so they put uh, plastic hoses down their throats and force fed them against the well. And women have been through so much to give us the right to vote. My God, what they've been through to give us. And now, you know, we have to beg women to show up to register to vote. It's deplorable that we even have to do this, considering what uh, women have done in the past to get us where we're at today. Mike, Mike, Sadie, Nancy, Ginger, Harry, Joyce, and myself have given countless hours in support in some way or another, either by giving up your Saturday. Joyce, her husband, is running for office, and she's here. So I think the one thing, the heart is there. We just need action. We've done enough talking. Your commitment is what is needed, and your commitment to the cause is what is needed. We're not here for the accolades. We're here for the change. And as in the words of Maya Angelou, and I hope I'm quoting this right, your crown has already been bought for you. Now it's up to you with what you do with it. I'm a member of NOW yes, and are. a proud member of NOW. I am the wife of Supervisor John Jenkins, who has served you as a county supervisor for 33 years. All right. <laughs> And believes in women's rights too, believe me. Oh, yeah. I, 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 he, he is a very strong proponent of you all. And he is probably coming in just in a minute. But, and I love doing things for the community. Nancy Hall and I are involved in several organizations such as the Literacy Volunteers, 
Project Mega House, uh, Dale City Civic Association, and it goes on because we really don't know when to stop signing up for everything. So we, we do love serving the community, and as I was saying, my husband, the longest sur serving supervisor in the history of Prince William. So I worked for a full year for a man when Ginger was a baby, and they did not know that she existed because I had to just tell them that I didn't have any children. So it wasn't just personally you didn't want anyone to know no, about me. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but why would you not want them to know that I, you have a child? Yeah, if, I, if they knew I had a child, they, I would not have gotten a job. Um, you know, it is about, um, you know, frankly, these, these girls will charge out and, and set up the lemonade stand and the entrepreneurship. This is my finance director, sorry. <laughs> but, she, you know, when we all three of our, uh, our family sat down when we talked about running, because it really is a family engagement, we talked about roles and, and sort of getting everyone involved. And Emily Maldis, you know, said she'll be the speechwriter. And Erin said you know, she she would help the fundraising. And Sarah said she'd be our chief door knocker. And it's really about you know engaging in roles and, and taking ownership of things. The way you interact with a man, the way you interact with a woman, is definitely different. Women we'll pick up on a different things, small things, a lot more so than a man would. So if you're taking that extra time. Understand a woman and what she's going through, and see if you could, you know, help balance out different things. They're going to appreciate that a little bit more so than men do typically. Mm -hmm. Do you find your communication different from raising boys and, um, and speaking to your granddaughters, even though they may not be your? Um, is the delivery easier or softer? Well, softer. no, it's softer. Is it? <laughs> but I can tell the boys, you know, I'm. But the girls, you have to, you know, you know, you're going to end up there if you're not careful, sitting there looking at her crying, and I don't like that. <laughs> but you have to, you have to apply the same equality and discipline to girls as you do to boys, and let me tell you. Girls are not softies. They, they, they know what they're they forced want. to be reckoned with. And, and you've got to give them guidance. And that's basically what I ended up doing. Because we don't always have the voices collectively as women. We're not always brave. We're always told to be quiet or we can't express ourselves or we shouldn't say these things. And we have to perform and do a whole laundry list of how we should behave in society because it's not necessarily acceptable to be very vocal. And if you have an opinion about something, it's not always accepted either. So we have a lot of strikes against us. So it's refreshing to hear him go to bat for us. Well, I mean, John goes to bat for us. I mean, he stood up in the middle of a breakfast. I've got a position. There's a position open. And I want one of you women to run for it. <laughs> and so it, it's refreshing to hear somebody, you know, those ground warriors that will go out and start speaking our, you know, our language, even if they don't fully understand what it's like to be a woman. Well, they at least help vocalize it. Well, I think for, so for Don, you know, he came out of the Army, and when we got married, I was making more money than he was oh. because he was a soldier. He wasn't an officer. Yeah. He was enlisted, and they don't uh, – that's a whole other issue that I could go on about. And so for the majority of all of our marriage, I think I've, I've actually earned more than, than he has. And it's never been an ego thing with him. In fact, he has told me he would like to, you know, not make any money and let me make all of that money. If I, could be <laughs> I, I have to laugh because my husband fully supports me making more money and going to work every day. He's like, you rock, get it, get it in. And I'm more than happy to stay home and take care of the kids. And every time I get a raise, he's like, yeah, ask for more. <laughs> ask for more. I'm right there yeah. with you. And I think that's a mindset. Because I think yeah, I think that would have been a big ego bruise to a, oh, a yeah. generation ago to yeah. men who felt like wouldn't want to pay more than that. Do you want to share? Yeah, anything? speaking of. <laughs> no, well, could you talk about what it was like to have your daughter when she was born? Maybe that part. You already had a son. You know, because you already had a son. Right. And What's the difference? Terror. Uh, yeah, big difference to me. Um, first of all, I wasn't really expecting to have her. Because we've had it in for five, four or five years, I think, well, are we going to have another one? And I'm thinking, well, I guess this is it. And she just, she came along and, I don't know, things change. 
No, I, I had to. I'm, I'm learning as I go, um, raising my kids. And nothing really prepares you to be a father. Um, but I love them. And that's, that's all I say. Is I, I love them. Do you have any fear, like, when she gets older, like, you fear oh, all of us? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to teach him uh, to be safe. He holds me in the highest respect and with the highest regard, and that's how you should treat every woman that you can.